What's up, people? Yeah, I feel like I need to talk about it. Speak on some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> why y'all artists don't respect, respect your producer? That's crazy to me. <laughs> Yo freaking connect to the game. Person who keeping you moving, keeping you with fresh beats, fresh material. Y'all artists tend to lose your respect for them. But I'm gonna talk about reasons why this might happen. First reason is, a lot of y'all probably gonna tell me, nah, man, that ain't why. That ain't why I lose my respect for my producer and stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you right now, might not be to you, but this is where it starts. Being a friend instead of a client. When you producers allow your friends, allow, allow your clientele, to cross that line of being a friend or a clientele. Now, there's a difference between being friendly and being a friend. Everybody can be friendly. Let's say that right there. But you should never consider everybody a friend. <laughs> because... From that point, you open up a door of, say, a person wanting to get a discount, that friends and family discount, like you work for a Sprint and you don't make beats. I'm just cleaning up my lab a little bit while I talk. But, yep, that's one of the issues that us producers fight with all the time. Trying to keep a friend, keep a clientele in that line of being a friend and the two on the right side of the line of being a friend or a clientele. Because you don't want them to cross the line into being your friend. That's the truth. That's the truth, I'm sorry, you really don't. Because from the time they crossed that line and they saw you start treating them like a friend and start calling them a good friend, what do they do? Start asking you for that friends and family discount on beats and shit. You ain't Sprint, you ain't T-Mobile, you trying to come up, ain't no friends and family discount. You can't come up giving people friends and family discounts. That's just being real. As much as we all, as producers, like to help out, you can't come up, you can't eat if you're doing friends and family discounts. And I know it's hard because you always got the artist that's going to try and push their way into the area to where you treat them like a friend. And stuff like that. That way they can say, oh, I thought I thought we was friends. No, bro, we ain't friends. We friendly. I mean, understand the difference between being a friend and friendly. We friendly, but we ain't friends. If we was friends, people I call my friends ride for me the same way I ride for them. That means me, I don't ask for nothing free. If I ask my friends for something free and they give it, I do the same for them. First, you got to establish this is business. It's like from a point, at some point, you got to lay down a line. For me, once you walk through that door, the entryway into my studio area, and you here, and I'm not making music just for me to be chilling, 
or something like that for my benefit, from that point on, it's business. It's business from that point on. And I don't start working. I don't turn on no programs until I get paid. If I'm not being paid, then why am I going to turn on a program other than doing what I usually do for the day? No cash in hand. No work to, no work on demand. You feel me? That's how that work. And y'all got to learn to put that, draw that line and that distinction with these artists nowadays because a lot of them are going to sit there and act like that's where they need to be, that they need to be your friend. No, you need, what you need to do is learn how to do professional work as an artist. That's why artists end up losing respect for a, a, a producer because that respect as a producer turns into respect as a friend. Stop it. And a lot of them don't know how to distinguish the, 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 the difference. If it's not that, then it's the fact that a lot of these artists out here don't know how to, how do you say, well, how do I say this? Support their friends, you feel me? And I ain't talking about the little share and share alike shit where you share my shit, I share your shit. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when you support your friend by coming to his house, jumping in his studio, doing a track, and paying him for it without him having to ask you for the money. The same way you would go to a studio out, out in the world or somewhere like that, that's not somebody you know, the first thing you're gonna do is come out your pocket and pay them because they gonna make you pay before you even hit the booth. So if you got the money on you, then why wouldn't you pay right up top, right off top? But when you come in, you hit the door, boom, here you go, bro. I need you to do something for me. All right, boom, we can work now. You just set the mood. <laughs> you just set the mood for the day. It's time to grind. It's time to get it. Because personally, I don't know about everybody else, how all the other producers out there and engineers do it, but me, when I get into, I don't get into grind mode until I get paid. You feel me? It, it, I, I'm not even in grind mode until I get some money in my hand. A lot of y'all out there jump into grind mode, start doing work and stuff for people just off the script. I can't do it. I can't do it. I respect my time. And even if an artist doesn't respect you, they need to learn to respect your time because time is something you can't get back. Just like these broads, just like these females out here. I think a lot of artists have female tendencies. And what, what I mean by that is the same shit a female would do to a nigga These artists would do to a nigga. Well, maybe not everything that a female would do. Well, you, you understand what I'm saying. The same way a female would treat a producer is the same. A female would treat a, treat a nigga the same way you artists treat your producer. Like they owe you something. For you walking through their lab. Which nine times out of ten... Half y'all don't even have a studio of your own and don't even know how to do this shit because you don't got the time writing down verses. Oh, shit. <laughs> writing down verses and shit to actually put the lab together. At least that's what you think. When really, you got the time. If you got the money to save up to pay for studio time, you got the money to save up and buy your own studio. 
and then hit an art, hit an engineer up and say, hey, yo, bro, I need you to come through and record me. Then you really paying for the nigga time. But y'all don't want to do that. So when you pull up at another person's place of work, and this is work, we out here doing it. This shit ain't free. This shit don't come out of the air. We're out here doing it because we love to do it and we plan on putting the money, putting hoping that it goes somewhere. So if you see a person sitting here, put all this stuff together, get a whole lab and everything and get it together and hook it up for you to be able to step into and you ain't doing nothing but wasting their time so you know what? You need to fall back. And the least you could do is pay for their time and respect them in their own place. Now, I'm not having no problems right now. I don't got no artists that treat me like that because really, I'm about two steps away from shutting down engineering. I really just, well, recording for niggas, shutting down the studio part. And I really just want to work on making beats and getting myself better at beats. Because when I first started doing this, my beats was banging. And I feel like I fell off a little bit because I was focusing on trying to get an artist, trying to get somebody to jump on my tracks. When I was selling my, my beats fine online without having to worry about it. Now, excuse me. What's good, Whitfield? But now I focus on, try, I've been focusing on trying to get an artist on my shit for so damn long to where I feel like I'm falling off on my beats. My melodies don't seem like they used to be. My drums, I feel like I'm losing my, my touch. It's like my focus is going from making beats to making, trying to boom artists, to making time to, to, to get an artist in here, to making money from trying to do songs. Well, really, I was making money fun just selling beats. So, yeah, I'm about two seconds away from saying, you know what? I don't think, well, I ain't going to say two seconds. I'm about two artists away from saying, you know what? I don't need to have recording sessions. Anytime I Uber and I run the studio, I, I make more money selling my beats online, making beats and posting them online. Then I make beats, bring it, then I make money bringing niggas into my lab, bringing niggas into my own personal split, space, feel me? I make extra money doing Uber and stuff like that. So, What's it? What makes it worth it for me to waste my time on half these artists that come through my credit and don't want to pay? And this is the shit that producers got to do with deal with. Because I'm gonna tell you straight, I promote most of my producers out there just in case you got artists that don't want to come through your credit and pay you for your time. You know what you can do? You can do Uber. Make that same money that you would for a session for our time doing Uber. Get your name out there, free promo, meet new people, just like you would every time you let somebody come in here that don't want to pay you for your time because they don't know if you've been doing this. You know, all this shit, all this shit just come from me just sitting around not knowing what I'm doing. Wasting your time, man. They wasting your time. That mean they don't respect you. And if they don't respect you, that mean you need to switch it up and move on to the next thing. The, the, the definition of insanity is doing something over and over, right? And not trying something new. Just to keep doing that same thing over and over and expecting it to work. That's insanity. And for years, in my case, 
I've been running into artists that don't be wanting to pay for studio time. They want to try and go cheap on me, undercut my, my rates and shit. And what I get out of it is they just really want to waste my time. When I got better things I can be doing, other things I can be doing that can put money in my pocket and be worth my time. I can focus on my beats and get my beats better. Instead of working with artists that don't be wanting to pay me for, for the, the cheapest full rates that I already charge. So in my case, I'm about two artists away from coming through my door to saying only people who come in here is people that I fuck with and keeping my circle small. Then I can say I only bring my friends into my studio. And just so you know, just because you're my friend and you're my homeboy, that don't mean I'm going to give you free studio time. I just work with my friends and my homies. I don't work with my clientele. So if you make it in my house, after the, after I get tired of doing studio time for niggas and y'all see me put the promo up, you see me do a video up saying that, yo, I'm done recording artists. I'm going to focus on my beats. More love to you. Which is probably how it's going to go. But understand if you're coming through my crib, we're going to work because that's what I do. But other than that, if it ain't of value to me, and it's not, then it's wasting my time. I got full support with you. I support all my friends the same way they support us. The reason that they support me, you feel me? The reason y'all artists feel like y'all don't get no, no play from a producer is because y'all don't promote the producers that you fuck with. You wonder why a nigga ain't blow? Because you too scared he might blow before you. That's what all, that's what everybody think, you feel me? That's crazy. You feel me? If you're a real friend and if you're a real supporter of whoever the hell you're fucking with, you're going to promote them anyway. You're going to put them out there. A lot of y'all artists don't understand that. And to me, I don't got time for it no more. Either you fuck with me or you don't fuck with me. If you don't fuck with me, cool. I mean, more power to you. Because in the long run, I already got my plan to make sure I'm booming. Make sure I'm good. I'm not trying to get famous. Never was trying to get famous. So all these telling me about uh, reasons I need to get out there and promote myself and market myself to people and stuff like that. I ain't trying to get famous. I ain't trying to get clout. I'm trying to get money. All that other shit, I ain't worried about it. All that other fame and clout and all that shit, I ain't worried about it. I'm trying to get money in my pockets. If it ain't putting money in my pockets, it ain't helping me. If it ain't putting money in my pockets, it ain't helping you. Because what? I need to get paid to improve on my shit. I need to get paid to step my game up. For every time the game switches and shit, I need to get paid to be able to get the buy the shit that I need to step my game up. You can't keep running on gear from 2000 something. You feel me? That's why I don't do it. I do what I got to do to keep my shit moving. That's why you always see me with something new in my lap. Because I like to work with the new new. You feel me? I don't like to work with the new old because it's new to you. I like to be working with the new because it's new to me. And when you pop in, my, when you come in my lab, you be like, oh, that's that new new. Yes, that's that new new because I work hard to be able to get the new new in here. And every time an artist come to me trying to get something for free on some bullshit, what you doing is hurting my pocket. And I don't take hurt in my pocket for too long. And another thing for why, another reason why artists 
don't respect the engineer or the producer is because y'all don't, y'all allow them to, to not have any respect for y'all. You let them come through your crib at your house and run your shit, tell you what they want in your shit and try to act like your shit is they shit. Me casa at su casa, homie, go oh so far. Understand that, artist? Me casa at su casa only go so far, man. I'm telling you. Y'all need to learn how to have a little bit more respect for another pe person's house. But then again, y'all engineers let them come in there and act like they gods or something because they laying down the trap. First of all, these niggas ain't shit. Just like these bitches ain't shit. So what you do is you tell them niggas straight up from the point they disrespect your house instead of sitting there and dealing with it because the way you do it, you tell them straight up, yo, bro, I don't allow that shit in my house. Take it outside, go to the next nigga that you cool with. See, y'all need to learn how to stand your ground in your own house. Stand up like a man. Because if you don't stand up like a man, the nigga gonna always try and come to your shit and try and run your shit. And from that point, they gonna assume that they can tell you what you need to get paid for your work. Come on, man. That's just how y'all allow these artists to do y'all. And I'm not saying this shit because I'm, I'm looking for something to fucking um, play on YouTube while I do this video, but because I've been getting my knowledge all day. But really, anything somebody come through your crib to do some work for and you allow them to do, and you allow them to treat you any kind of way in your crib, you might as well say you deserved it, bro. That's only being real. Me, I won't allow anything that I wouldn't do at somebody else's house. Plain and simple. Then you catch me at your house doing the same shit you come to my house, you can do it. Other than that, if you come to my house, you respect my house. If you come to my house to do business, then you conduct it like it's business. Pay me when you step in. Don't pay me till I, after I sit here for hours to record your shit. Pay me up front. Let me know what you're asking for. Not pay me now. Then want to hit, have me put the work in. Then you sitting there wasting my time half the time. And then want to pay me for four hours work with hours worth of pay. Come on, man. Y'all artists, y'all producers, see, I done been there, so I know exactly what it's like, and I don't got time for it no more. This is the reason why I might just stop engineering. Because I know we all coming up, and we all have problems, but because you have problems, don't mean you need to make my problems worse. And you're going to make my problems worse every time you decide not to pay me, every time you decide not to pay any engineer, every time you decide not to, you just making everybody else. All I'm saying is pay for what you asked for. That's to be honest, man. If you ask me to do something for you, Pay me for my work. If you don't like my work, don't come to me. Go to the next nigga. But from the time you decide to want to hit somebody up and ask them to do something, pay them for it. Smell me. Shit, if I can't pay you, then if I call you, any, if I call any artist up to come get on the track, I either plan on giving you some money, so I need no point in asking why. Or I'm planning on doing the song that we can both put out. Putting something out that we can both put out and benefit from. If it ain't, we're going to do splits. So it's splits or cash up front. Same way I expect y'all to work with me is the same way I work with y'all. 
Shit, we can even do swaps. I heard on a producer podcast the other day that producers are doing swaps now. Basically, you get the beat, swap that back with the producer, and call it a song. Swap the vocals back with the producer. You do the song, get the song back to the producer because he gave you the beat, and there you just pay for your track. But see, y'all artists out here got shit just completely fucked up. Y'all think that shit supposed to go for y'all. Like, it's supposed to go all in y'all way. Like, the, the world don't work like that. You don't go to somebody else asking them to do something for you and then expect it all to go your way. No. No. Especially not with Dutch. Dutch ain't gonna never be that nigga. That's like a 360 deal going wrong. I don't do 360 deals on any way. Because nine times out of ten, like the homie say, y'all need us way more than we need y'all. Because like I be always saying, I would, to the day I die, I have never heard an acapella album. Have you ever heard of an acapella album? Not me. I've never heard of an acapella album. Out. That's true. I've never heard an acapella album. Blow. Where it was just vocals. Never heard it. So y'all need a beat maker, right? But you don't want to give the beat maker the respect that a beat maker deserves for making your shit pop. I think y'all got the game all fucked up. And the thing is, the only reason y'all got the game all fucked up, just like these females out here got the game all fucked up, by thinking that shit supposed to be their way, y'all do so to me, nowadays, I equivalent treat, interaction with an artist to interaction, interaction with a female. You feel me? I so, sort of deal with y'all the same way. One, I'm going to stand up for myself as a man. Two, uh, I ain't shit free around here, nigga. <laughs> I don't do shit free for no broad. I don't do shit free for no, bro no niggas. Not in my lab. And this is how y'all got to be. Y'all got to stand up. As engineers, y'all got to stand up for you, the, the shit to get your money. You feel me? You can't, you can't do this shit and expect to do this shit for free. So, I don't know how, how any other way of putting it. Niggas have some balls. Because can't ain't nothing these niggas out here can do to you that you can't do to them. And that's how I live my life. I live on that shit. I die by it. Ain't nothing y'all artists can do to me that I can't do to you. And one, if you did a song and you dissed me on it, thank you for the free promo. 100. Two, I don't give a shit about that shit. But you expect me because I got a booth or something like that to go jump on the track, to go jump on the track to make a beat, jump on the song. Just to write, write some verses, just to diss you. No, I'm going to take that free promo and I'm going to keep it moving with making beats. Just like that. I'm not going to think twice about it. I'm not going to think twice about y'all. And y'all artists out here saying here doing tracks, disrespecting your producer, putting diss tracks out towards your producers and shit. Y'all niggas is lame. For real shit, y'all niggas is lame, man. Y'all dissing somebody that ain't even in your lane. I'm six foot three, 200 something pounds. And you don't see me running out here. Well, I'm 189 something pounds, but you don't see me running out here beating up retards. You feel me? They not even on my level. And if you sit here and call yourself an artist and just cause you hear a producer rap, you think you're gonna do a diss track to, to him and cause he rapped to his own beats? Nigga, that, that's, Bro, producers, 
take that free promo. <laughs> take that free promo. Don't even be mad. Don't even be mad. Don't let it upset you. Take that free promo and keep it pushing. Give them the middle finger on the way out the door. Because <laughs> really, it don't even matter. Now, when I got a producer that want to sit there and bang with me, like, you want to challenge me to, to a beat battle or something like that to see if I'm good? Then I worry about it. I, I don't get beef with nobody. First of all, I've never really ever heard of a real producer beef. Like, we don't do that shit. Most of the time, we are too damn high and focused on making beats. To be out here trying to beef, you feel us? Feel me? Only ones out here trying to beef is the ones that's assuming that they artists and rappers at the same time. Pick your lane. Producers, we ain't trying to beef with people. We trying to get money, get high, and fuck bitches. <laughs> Only time a producer and an artist get beef is because the producer fucked his bitch. Which, like, we all know this, how, how it go. You don't hate the player. You hate the <laughs> Real shit. Don't get mad at the nigga. Get mad at the chick. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. You feel me? You can't be out here letting your broad be out here around your producer knowing the producer don't do nothing but sit in the studio. <laughs> nigga don't do nothing but sit in the studio and make beats. <laughs> so, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, this is my mindset. She gonna pull up on the nigga. Talking about, oh, I thought he was over here, so I'm coming over. I thought I was gonna come over and catch him here. Bitch, you know that nigga ain't here. <laughs> Bitch, you know that nigga ain't here. You know that shit at the door when you let her in, that she knew that nigga wasn't there. We ain't saying no names. We ain't saying no names. <laughs> But you know that nigga one day. Pull up at that nigga door. Get your guts beat in. Talking about you thought your man was there in the studio. Why you ain't called the nigga first? Why the fuck you? I'm sidetracking. But that's another reason why producers, re artists don't respect the producer. Because we out here smashing y'all broads, nigga. Don't be mad. Don't hate the player. Hate the gizane, nigga. Real shit. <laughs> but then again, I'm a little buzz right now, so I can talk shit. <laughs> All these artists think that they um sex they what they call it sex um sex objects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't forget the person who made that R&B beat that you made that sick ass song to, right? Made that sick ass R&B beat that you was on. <laughs> that really, really now, I mean, if we talk about it, that's what really got the chick's attention. She wasn't listening to shit you were saying on the track. If I do say so myself, that's some shit that happens later. We all know how it is when you listen to an album. You don't ever listen to the artist's words right off top. Unless you just one of them lyricists, loving ass niggas like me. I listen to verses and stuff like that off top. But really, I still listen to the beat first. I don't even listen. To, I have to pop it in my car for me to actually hear what the lyrics are that an artist is spitting on a song. So I'm going to tell you straight, all you artists out there that go to a producer and be like, hey, bro. Let me pull up my shit on SoundCloud. Listen to this real quick. That nigga ain't listening to shit. <laughs> that nigga ain't listening to shit you saying. That nigga ain't, ain't, ain't listening to nothing. He listening to that beat. Because one, he want to know there's two things going on right now. Two out of three things going on right now. He listening to that beat. Find out what type of beats you want to buy and what type of beats you are purchasing. He listening for the style of who, who made the beat so he can 
I understand, get that vibe. And he listening for a tag on that beat to see if you actually buying your beats, nigga. That's what producers are doing. Every time y'all sit there, we ain't listening to shit y'all saying. We ain't listening to shit y'all saying. If it sound like a YouTube beat, right? Only thing we listening to is for a tag. If we hear that tag, we know you ain't buying shit, nigga. <laughs> if we hear that tag, we know you ain't buying shit. And we don't hear an artist on there that we recognize. We know your city ain't fucking with you. Boom. <laughs> That's just being real. If I, anytime I hear an artist music that they send me, I listen for two things. A tag, features, and what the beat sound like. I don't listen to the artist's lyrics. Because nowadays, lyrics can be straight garbage and still get play. You, you, you wonder why that is? You want me to tell you what that is? The beat. <laughs> it's the beat. That's why a, a artist's lyrics can be straight garbage. Lyrics can be straight garbage. And the only reason that song get played is because the engineer, the good, the engineer did a good job mixing it. And the beat was banging. Nobody listens to lyrics anymore. And why that is? Because a lot of y'all artists sound just like somebody else. A lot of y'all artists sound like somebody that's already out already. There's no originality. So why the fuck? The only thing original about this shit is the beat. So why even listen to the artists? I don't understand it. You think y'all niggas would catch the idea of that and start switching up your flow patterns. But now all y'all niggas want to sound like Future and 21 Savage. And the up north niggas want to sound like freaking, um, what's the, what's the niggas? Somebody name a nigga from up north. Everybody trying to sound like, uh, Pop Smoke. Niggas want to be like Pop Smoke. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's why. And you know what? I ain't even going to blame y'all. I ain't even gonna blame y'all. I'm gonna blame these producers out here that have no originality and is making beats just like some other producer. Stop trying to be your favorite producer. It's cool to learn how to learn the patterns and stuff like that. That's cool. Learn the beat patterns and stuff like that so you can put it in your own production. But stop trying to be like your favorite producer. Try be you for once. Niggas, try and be you, niggas. You know what I mean? Come on, man. All y'all niggas out here sounding like somebody else. How the fuck you expect to stand out? Stop doing that. Stop making tight beats. And, and if you're going to make a tight beat, make a genre tight beat, not a producer tight beat. Come on, man. That's just low key beat jacking. That's all that is, is low key beat jacking. You making the beat like a producer. You copying another producer's style. That's why these producers out here fucking your bitch like you. <laughs> That's real. That's why we out here smashing your broad just like you. Because she finds something different in us other than you. Of course, I'm not doing it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just Stating facts. <laughs> and I can state these facts because I'm a little high right now. But on the real, on the real, if I do have to say so myself, a lot of you artists sound like your homeboy. A lot of you South niggas want to be Kodak Black. If you Zoe, that's cool. But a lot of y'all niggas want to sound like Kodak Black. I mean, really is getting monotonous, man. I can't even listen to the radio without hearing, hearing somebody that sound like somebody that's already been out for years. Which is why all I do is listen to shit that I'm already used to. Why? 
keep listening to niggas that's gonna sound like somebody else, just have somebody else's same flow patterns and shit. I might as well listen to the person they trying to be like. Think about that. Think about that right there. That might be the reason why people don't listen to your music and follow your music like that because you're trying too hard to be like somebody that you already fuck with, that everybody else already fuck with. Stop trying to sound like somebody else that you not. You got the talent. Obviously, if you can sound like somebody else, now take that same talent and be you. And stop freestyling. Stop freestyling. I'm tired of that shit. That shit's good for battles. But stop going to the studio freestyling. Stop it. Unless you videotaping your freestyle live, stop going to the studio freestyling. Stop it. Have some organization with your music, man. Write your shit down. Show up at the studio, ready to get it in so you're not wasting everybody else's time that has to be there dealing with your shit. Where my lighter at? There it is, right there. Y'all got me. Give me my damn lighter. Niggas always stealing niggas' lighters and shit. But on the real, though, y'all niggas need to start being more yourself. Half the time, y'all niggas don't even sound like the niggas. And when y'all talking, y'all don't even sound like the niggas y'all trying to be like. Y'all don't even sound like the type of nigga you trying to be. Real shit. Real shit. So you can tell it's a front. You can tell it's a front. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Be you. Because instead of listening to you, person just going to keep listening to somebody else. Every time you give them a CD or you send somebody a song where you sound like, the only thing they're going to say is, you know, he sound just like, and that's who they're going to remember. They ain't going to remember you. They're going to remember the person you sound like. Stop it. Only thing that made these artists boom is the fact that they didn't sound like somebody else. They had something original about them. You guys have the talent and you don't know how to find your originality. And then you think that the best way to be original, right, is to freestyle. Maybe freestyling is what got you not being original. Maybe going in and just doing the flow patterns that come to your head off top is your problem, because that's what you just doing. You freestyling off somebody else's flow patterns. Stop freestyling. Write your shit down. Find your own flow patterns, your own flow style. Write your shit down. Stop being so repetitive. That right there, y'all wonder why y'all ain't blowing. Y'all repetitive as fuck. Why you think I stopped rapping? I knew I was repetitive as fuck when I freestyled. That's why I started writing. And why I stopped writing is because I got lazy. I don't like to write. I know my lane. I make money making beats, selling beats. So I make beats. Stop asking me to rap for you. Stop asking me to get on a track. I'm not getting on a track just because you hear me spit a couple good bars. I know them couple good bars are fire, but the next few bars is going to be some garbage. <laughs> I know that. I know that. I know when I get in this studio that this right here, this, this mic is not my best friend. The studio mic, the booth mic is not my best friend. I understand my best friend is this keyboard right here. My best friend is FL Studio because they work with me. See, understand your talents, man. Understand your talents and stop going to people's houses thinking you can freestyle something. If it ain't in your flow pattern, if it ain't in your, your breathing and your ability to rap fast, if it's not you, stop going getting these beats trying to be Eminem. 
trying to be freaking Buster Rhymes, trying to be these fast bitches. If it's not in your thing, because you come in the studio thinking you're going to spit fast every two bars. I right, record that, punch me in. And you're going to do that for 16 bars. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Y'all fucking with a nigga time. And if you ain't coming to the studio to pay for that time y'all fucking with, stop doing that shit. Stick to your own flow patterns. Stick to the shit that you can handle doing. Stop trying to be somebody else because they already perfected that shit. You feel me? They done perfected that flow pattern to where they don't need it. So stop trying to be them. Be you. Some niggas just spit slow. Like when I was dropping bars, they was good bars. But I spit slow. I'm a slow nigga. I'm gonna be out here, uh, hundred bars, and I'm not Mr. Um, throwing quotables and shit. I'm just gonna say what the fuck I gotta say and get the fuck out the booth. That's it. That's it. And that's what y'all niggas need to do. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Be you. When you come to the studio, be you, nigga. Stop trying to be two chains. Stop trying to be fucking Kodak Black. Uh, fucking Glock 9. Nigga, be you. I'm tired of hearing everybody sound like somebody else. I really am. It's crazy. And you can tell when somebody's trying to sound like somebody else. You can tell. Because when they talk, they don't sound nothing like the person who's talking. You would think if they sound like that when they rap, that they would sound like the person when they talking, but they don't. That's a dead giveaway. You trying to be somebody you not. Which all that does is devalue the trap that you're doing in that flow style. Because it's not you. You can't do. If you do a track trying to sound like the fig. 50 cent, right? And you doing it, right? Trying to sound like him? It ain't gonna never sound like him because you got him and you pushing it. You pushing it. You trying so hard to sound like somebody else that it comes off fake. You feel me? I know. I know. I'm saying it. And everybody say when I used to spit, I used to sound like freaking Jay-Z on some tracks. I used to sound like Young Buck on some tracks. It's because I would push it and people would see that. They would see that. They would see that I'm pushing to sound like somebody else. But when I write, you ask one of my homies when I did a song that I wrote to and I follow my own flow patterns. You feel me? Then I stand out. This is what y'all got to do. That's why y'all got to stop sitting around here freestyling. Freestyling ain't doing nothing but doing your senses to this shit anyway. What you need to do is learn how to develop your own flow style, your own cadences. Understand what cadences is. Two, y'all niggas need to learn how to um, count bars. Because half y'all don't even know how to count bars. Y'all be coming in with a beat. And you don't even know how long your freaking verse is. What the world? How you going to come in with a beat? You don't even know how long your verse is. You didn't sit at home rapping this song all freaking day. And you don't even know how long the verse is. You got a whole hook. Whole 32 bar hook. Because you don't know that a hook is supposed to be eight bars, nigga. You don't know where the hook starts and begins on the track. Y'all need to do y'all research. Y'all need to do y'all research as artists and stop trying to be somebody or not. See, she believed me. Even my cat came up here to tell, hey, Tiger, tell her. My daddy had bars. <laughs> I'm telling y'all niggas. Y'all need to take my advice. If anything, if you ain't taking my advice as a, a, a music professional, take my advice as a fan. Because the only reason I'm saying this shit is because it's 
talented artists out there that I wouldn't give the time of day because they sound like somebody that's already out. And with that right there being said, I'm gonna go listening to the people that y'all trying to sound like. One hundred.